to five, but the work in flaws and all. I love them all to be a perfect baby girl. You got it, girl. You got it, girl. You got it, girl. You got it, girl. Cause I don't want. Okay, it's your girl Ruby from Texas. I am back with another hair video. This video is me doing my aunt's hair and I am going to show you how I completely cover all of this discoloration. She dots, uh, temporary dyed her hair around the sides and as we washed it, it you know, came out or whatever. So now I'm gonna go in and do her hair red and black. So in this video, I basically be, will be showing you a method to where you do not have to dye the hair. Um, and you can still repeat, re excuse me, <laughs> I'm having a tug tie today. You can still achieve a really, really nice color as well. So let's get right on to the video. I start by parting her hair. So if you see here, I done already made my part. I used a little suffer eight in her hair because she be having a little dandruff. And if you use suffer eight, it'll go ahead and knock all that dandruff out because you do not want your scalp to be flaky when you're using this method. I like to use jam or shine and jam, just whichever I have, really just ever is on sale at the beauty supply at this time. So right here, I went ahead and parted all the way across. I um, am combing it, really just trying to make sure I'm combing any dandruff that may have been left out. And I'm gonna go in and party it, and then I'm gonna go in with some jam to really, really define that part. All right, so here I've already completed the first row. I am starting on the second row. I am just zooming in a little bit and letting you guys see how I part each square individually and I am going to use the rubber band method which I find to be the most helpful method in covering up uh, any discoloration or even if you just want to change your hair color using weave and not actually using dye. So again here is just a little bit more detailed of how I actually go in and make the parts as straight as I can make them. All right, so that's a pretty straight square part. Um, I'm just combing her hair out because I find it more helpful to go ahead and comb the hair out before it, before I start braiding it. It gives you an easier application and it just makes the braids last longer and look smoother and it keeps the hair healthier and it allows it to grow. Right here, I'm just applying a rubber band. Um, I would suggest that you make them pretty tight so that they can last. This method, I will also show you how to cover up the rubber band. Okay, and I know some people just like to see, you know, most of the process. So I'm going in again to show you how I'm parting. So this one is just the same repeat. You can just see how I'm parting in and applying a rubber band to make it a square. I also suggest that you comb it out as much as you can before you start the process. So I would say that these parts are about medium size. These would be a medium size, medium to large, give or take. I think if I would have did them any smaller, they would have been small. So I was going for a medium to large look. Okay, now this is how it looks once I am done. If you look right here, you can see I got all of them parted out nice and neat. That jam will help you keep them nice and neat. I started the process, what I'm calling, oh, look at my auntie girl, happy, let's go girl. <laughs> so right here, I started the process 
I did not show you guys uh, the hair that I was using, but I would put it in the description bar. I also cut the hair in half. I think it was 40 inches. So I cut the hair in half because this is gonna be a bob style. And each square, I crocheted in hair. Some of them I did red. I didn't do a lot red. I just wanted to, you know, give it a little, a little razzle dazzle. So right here, I take the hair and I crochet it through the bottom, the base of the ponytail. And then I make sure, it is very important to make sure, if you see right here, that the hair is in the middle. So it's full hair on the top and on the bottom. That is the best way you can cover it. I take an additional piece of hair, like I'm going in to just braid, and I just use the additional piece of hair, I wrap it around, that's how I wrap it around the braid. Excuse me, I wrap it around the base, which is the rubber band, and that's how I'll cover up the rubber band. I do not split the hair until the end if I need to move some hair around, but I just make sure I'm tucking the hair. So I'm tucking it in between the top and the bottom hair that I've already crocheted in. And that's the best way that I'm able to cover her hair. So after this video, we did do a sew-in and I just went ahead and dyed her hair all the way black. So if we come back and do braids, it would be a little bit easier to just cover it completely. But if you don't want to dye it, again, I, this is a perfect method. Now for these braids, I did take them all the way to the ends, I'll say almost shoulder length. I wanted them to be long enough so they wouldn't be too, too thin at the end. I wanted them to have some good, good length going down and then I wanted them to have some good width as well. All right, so I'm braiding in the red and black. So I wanted to show you guys that I, I crocheted the red in and then I just used the black piece around it. So that's how I was able to mix the red with the black. It was really pretty easy and simple. Just, you know, and then I tucked the hair under the red as you can see in this video. All right now, so I'm doing the top of the hair. These are my last three. Um, I've already crocheted this one in and I'm just wrapping the hair around it and I'm tucking it. I wanted you guys to get a top view so you can see how I am tucking it. Um, if you can't tuck all the hair, just tuck as much as you can. And sometimes the braids do need to be larger or the parts need to be smaller, and then you'll be able to tuck it a little bit more. I think just having more weave than the actual natural hair helps cover up the, the unwanted color to, that you know you don't want to be shown. Okay, so here I'm just repeating the steps. And for the rest of these this steps, you'll be able to see how I'm actually just braiding the top. I thought this would be some good clips just to put in and you guys can see. So right now I'm just gonna let you watch this part of the video and then I will come back and speak shortly.
right here, you're going to see me applying additional piece of hair to go ahead and cover up the rubber band. That is the best way to cover up the rubber band. And again, you want hair on top and at the bottom of the natural hair, you want to add the weave to surround it. So in this clip, you see how I'm actually tucking it. So this is the best way to actually tuck the unwanted color of your natural hair inside of the weave. I'm braiding it all the way down so that I'll be able to clip it and burn it and so that it can all be even across. We're going for a bob hairstyle. All right, we're down to the last two. We're almost at the end of the video. I'm so glad that you guys are watching this video. If you found anything helpful in this video, make sure you go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment because I want to do more of these videos to make sure that we all are sharing information and that, you know, we're learning some new skills or just perfecting our skills. I also have a whole playlist of videos, how to braid, other styles that I have done, including uh, fox locks and just different styles. So make sure you check out that playlist as well. All right, this is the last one. I'm just gonna show you guys right here. I am covering the rubber band. I am taking the hair and I'm putting the hair on top, the weave on top of the natural hair and making sure there's some on the bottom of the natural hair as well. So we're just gonna go straight on in and we're gonna start braiding. Once I do two to three braids down, I flip it and I start underhanding. Because once I start braiding like that, I find it to be easier for me to go ahead and braid quickly. If you notice, I keep leaning up to look at the front of the braid. I think when you do it someone here, it's very important to see how it's laying on the front to make sure that it is laid correctly, and if not, that you should go in and correct it. But we're finishing up the last braid here. Right, so what you're seeing here now is the complete look. I am going in with a lighter. I burned the ends, so hopefully you guys can see how I close off the ends. I burn it with a lighter. Um, I press it with my fingers. I don't know if that's always the right method. I don't do a lot of braids too often to where I have to do it like that. So if it's something you're gonna be frequently doing, I don't think this is the correct method for you to use because it does make your hands a little, you know, war from time to time. So once I go ahead and seal it off, I cut it with scissors and then I go ahead and seal the end again with a lighter. Now you're gonna see me dip in the hair. I please do not skip this process. This just literally makes your hair look so much better once you're completely done. So I just boil some hot water, put it in a cup. I put a towel around her shoulders and I'm keeping a towel under the hair as I go. Now this is it. You just finish out like that and you are done and complete. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you found anything helpful. And yes, until next time.